Where are her eyebrows? The ever so cleverly named X takes place in 1979 with a group of people looking to get rich by making high quality and classy porn. After reaching the location of a secluded farm, the cast made up of Booby Lynn, Discount Black Dynamite, Glasses, a church mouse, No Brows, and a guy named Wayne soon begin to film the porn they came to make. About halfway through the film is when the movie finally switches gears to the horror it sells itself on and the bodies begin to pile up. Now spoilers, because there are things I'm going to save your sanity from so you don't have to lose hours of sleep because you can't control alt delete your own memory now bear with me right away this film tries to sell you on the setting taking place in 1979 all the superficial things are there like costumes vehicles etc although a grainy filter was overlaid since older video recording equipment is apparently too hard to come by but that's just it it all just feels so lazy the setting is as normal as it can get, I suppose, but there is nothing else besides that. Well, this seems like a weak argument, Albelio. Alright, ask yourself this. What exactly does the 70s setting change for the better? Glasses wants to make classy porn, but that thought can still be applied to modern day. Wayne wants to make money with a newer, better product. Yeah, get in line. No Brows and Booby Lynn want to be famous, but everyone wants that. Even the point of isolation doesn't hold up here, since these folks could have traveled to the ass end of nowhere instead so far that the Verizon guy, sorry, the T-Mobile guy, would have been out of range. There is nothing that putting this film in the 70s accomplishes, and I'm willing to bet that many pretentious douche nozzles are going to make some left-field claim that this film pays homage to Grindhouse. And those claims couldn't be stretched any thinner than pantyhose around a cow. Even thematically, this film falls flat on its stomach like you slapped a penguin upside the head. I don't even give a shit about theme, and I can't find one that makes sense here. Theme is a dime a dozen, of course, and you can pull themes out of your ass like a politician does excuses. Trying to find a main focus that acts as a through line here is like finding a low-budget film Nicolas Cage won't star in. There is no growth. Everyone remains the same from start to finish. Well, technically, Church Mouse degrades as a character, so that should count and doubles as a- If you say this is a subversion, I will drown your whole family like a pack of Oreos. Besides, all of the death scenes in this movie are telegraphed from a mile away like the steamroller scene in Austin Powers, so there's no tension to release in the first place. Well, the lone survivor is a woman against insurmountable odds. No the fuck they are not! An elderly couple that a stiff breeze could knock over does not a Michael Myers make. Almost every victim in this film practically stands there until the script reads, and then they died. Besides, no one gets into a physical altercation with either of them, because the film would be over faster than an Iron Man challenge in Elden Ring. Oh yeah? Well, the survivor is a woman, so HA! The reason these so-called forces of nature were men in the 70s and 80s is because their stature and physical prowess. This added to the threat, so when women so often defeated them in those films, it wasn't because they threw hands, but because of their resourcefulness. This was an encouragement that despite physical differences, women could still overcome the same challenges using their intellect. This film ends because one of the elderly literally keels over and the other disables herself. No Browse does fucking nothing to earn her escape, so what you you would dare to call a homage, I call spitting in the face of better writing and strong female characters. And the whole time, this movie will not stop telling you that No Brows has the X Factor, so that's why she's so special and she will make it. Are you fucking kidding me? She couldn't grow facial hair if she painted her face with beard oil, and you're gonna try to convince me that she's special? The film practically hands her a get out of jail free pass on a silver platter. I cannot wrap my head around how anyone could possibly give this film a higher rating than absolute crap. The only competence here that requires any real amount of thought is the screenplay, which admittedly sets up a lot that does lead to various payoffs. But besides that, the film sells you on TNA because there is nothing else of merit. I mean, good lord, there is even a scene where the elderly couple does the deed because the filmmakers thought they could try to one-up Lonely Island's music video for Boombox, and I would rather fight a Shogoth to the death than endure that shit ever again. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and check out my review of the Batman here as I discuss in detail why I stand firm and balanced against the hype behind the film. And I'll see you in the next video.